thank you for for tuning in into this session. Um, you are at Berkeley Global Connections, uh, which is an event that is brought to you in collaboration with Education USA Chile, Education USA Peru, and Education USA Colombia. So before we uh, get even started, I would like to give a huge shout out to our partners at Education USA, Education USA for making these uh, possible. Thank you so much for organizing this event and delivering this event in collaboration with us um for helping us um spreading the good word about you know this event happening and for being here so thanks so much Brida and erica for being here and any other colleague at education usa who are able to to make it in the session um so we're gonna be talking a little bit about um actually we're gonna be talking a lot about music and <laughs> berkeley college of music and careers in music and the opportunities that our college provides to uh, musicians around the world. Um, so before we get into that, uh, let's introduce the panelists. <laughs> so moving forward, you know, a little self introduction. My name is uh, Daniel Abusi and I'm Associate Director of Berkeley Global Enrollment Initiatives at Berkeley uh, College of Music. Uh, this is a QR code that will lead you to my link tree where you can, you know, listen to my music and find ways to connect with me. Uh, I'm all over the place, Facebook, Instagram, uh, you name it, uh, email. <laughs> so if you need to get a hold of me, you know where to find me. Um, and just like you, I'm a musician. I've been a guitarist for the past, uh, I don't even know anymore, 20 something years. Um, I've done production, I've done songwriting, I've done gigging. And uh, but enough about me, I'm going to pass it on to Brita Yaferro, my colleague in Global Enrollment Initiatives. Hi, everybody. Uh, so nice to meet you here today. Like Daniel said, I want to thank you for joining us. Um, my name is Brie Tagliaferro, and I'm the Assistant Director in Global Enrollment Initiatives here at Berkeley. Um, I'm a cellist, as you can see from the picture. And like Daniel mentioned, if you want to connect with me, um, that gets you to my Instagram. I'm always posting about different events that we're having, both in person when we're traveling and online events like these. So if you want to stay in touch, you can scan that code and follow me there. Thanks, right, Daniel. Uh, you forgot to mention that you are an amazing cellist. <laughs> That's what you're here for, right? <laughs> All right. So as you know, Berkeley College of Music is located in the city of Boston uh, on the east coast of the United States. Uh, if you've never been to Boston, it's a fantastic college town with a lot of history. And we have prepared a very short video that shows you a little bit uh, of our urban campus. So by urban campus, it means that the Berkeley College of Music is located in the heart of the city. Uh, right downtown, we have acquired slash built a number of locations that we have around the city. And this means that when you're at Berkeley, you're truly in the heart of the city. You're not going to be in a confined space that it's, you know, um, uh, in, in the in the outskirt of the city, but you'll be playing music and studying and living downtown. Um, and without further ado, let's check out this super quick snapshot of the campus. Berkeley's Boston campus pulses with music, theater, dance, and artistic energy. Located in the city's vibrant Back Bay neighborhood, it's an ideal place to begin developing your lifelong professional network with artists and creative thinkers from all over the world. From our custom-built high-rise that houses students, a dining hall that doubles as a concert space, and a 10-studio music production complex, to our state-of-the-art classrooms, practice facilities, and performance halls, Berkeley offers an unparalleled setting for students to learn and develop as artists. Find yourself here. Schedule a campus tour and experience Berkeley firsthand. All right, that was short and sweet. Now let's talk a little bit about what uh the in what our institution looks like right so obviously berkeley is a um is a, is, is a big college with a number of branch campuses and campuses and uh locations they go under the the wider berkeley umbrella uh so we're gonna start talking a little bit about our headquarters here in the city of boston um uh, berkeley was founded in 1945 and originally it was it was it was uh, founded as a, a school of jazz so you know when you hear about berkeley it's it's common for you to hear that berkeley is a jazz school but a lot has changed over the past 70 something years 
uh, and we're now focusing on all styles of music. The reason why Berkeley was focusing on jazz back in the day is because on the east coast of the United States back in 1945, the music of the time was jazz, right? And this remained the same. So Berkeley's always been focusing on the music of the time, but fast forward 70 years, the music of the time is whatever music that you listen to, right? It could be pop music, it could be electronic music, folk, um, um, it could be uh, bluegrass or jazz or blues or rock or metal, right? Uh, so at, at Berkeley, we have the resources and the faculty to um, explore each and every style and whatever style that you can possibly imagine, imagine and also develop new ones. Um, so it is in Boston where we have the majority of our undergraduate programs. So we have a total of 14 majors available. Uh, these 14 majors are programs that will last about eight semesters, uh, which is a total of four years. And these 14 majors, 12 of them are available as a diploma and as a degree, and two other are only available as a degree. Uh, we also have a number of summer programs, the most popular of which is the five week music performance intensive. The summer programs run between the end of May and the end of August, and uh, they are the perfect, perfect opportunity for you to check out our campus, check out the city of Boston, and see if this is something that you want to do uh, for, for, a longer, for a longer period of time. Um, we also have one master program uh, in Boston that is called Global Jazz Performance, and it's uh, a, kind of like a smaller program for students who are into jazz and into performance, right? So this is something that you should be exploring if your preferred music style is jazz and if you are a performer and you want to get a master level degree in performance as it pertains to jazz. All right, so moving forward, um, we have also Berkeley Online that falls under the wider Berkeley umbrella. Berkeley Online has been around for 20 years uh, and is an extension school where we have a number of programs available that range from certificate programs to undergraduate to graduate programs. And it's really the perfect opportunity for you to study at your own pace meaning that maybe you have a busy schedule at work, maybe you're busy with school, you want to acquire a certain level or certain skills uh, that you require to do your performance work or your production work or to um, uh, perfect your skills on a certain instrument. There's a very, very um, wide catalog of courses and options that you can choose from. And all of these are offered online, which is a combination of recorded and live sessions. Uh, that you could take advantage from, right? Uh, so you could potentially take up uh, an, an undergraduate degree or a graduate program and make sure that you're able to work on your assignments at a time that works with your busy schedule, right? Moving forward, um, we also have a campus in the city of Valencia, Spain. This campus was built in 2012. Uh, and that's our Valencia campus, built in the midst of uh, the city of the arts that you can see in this beautiful picture. Uh, and just let me tell you, Valencia is a fantastic city. It's right on the ocean, right in the heart of Europe. I'm personally from Europe, so I'm a little biased. Uh, and I love <laughs> just being out there. Um, but going back to the Valencia campus, this is where we house four of our graduate programs that you can see listed on the slide. And we also have available an undergraduate option that is um, a fantastic opportunity for you to apply for Berkeley and come to Boston to study, but take your first year of courses in Valencia, right? So this is the perfect way for you to get admitted into Berkeley, go to Valencia, be a part of the Valencia community, meet the faculty, meet all the fantastic musicians that come from all over the world, and then after a year, once you completed your program, move on to Boston to study for the remaining three years and then start over in terms of uh, connections and network and meet new faculty and meet new people and expand your network. Because as you know, if you're a musician, your network is everything. Your ability to connect with people and other musicians is everything because the people that are sitting next to you in the cafeteria or in your classroom are the people that are going to be hiring you are the people that you're going to be working with or for 
Uh, and same goes with the faculty. So all of our faculty at Berkeley, both in um, Valencia and Boston, they're not just music professors. These are active um, professionals in the industry that um, do uh, recording gigs and performance gigs and teach and do music. So they do film scoring and they do um, teaching and so on and so forth. So you get to connect with folks that are that have been active in the field and the field that interests to you for years and years. So literally la, la creme de la creme of <laughs> of um, um, of the professionals that the industry can offer. So moving forward, um, we also have another slide that is about the Boston Conservatory. So the Boston Conservatory used to be a separate school and it's also located in Boston. The Boston Conservatory, it's also the oldest music conservatory in the United States with over 150 years of history. Um, in 2016, because the Boston Conservatory and Berkeley were so geographically close to each other and always been sister schools, we merged with them, right? So the Boston Conservatory became a part of the Berkeley network, right? In this way, Berkeley was able to expand outside of contemporary music and take in students that come to study programs in classical music, in dance, and theater. Uh, this also created opportunities for students on both, in both institutions to better collaborate. So often when you're at Berkeley, you'll take part in concerts where you're playing and somebody in the conservatory is dancing or is playing their instrument, right? Um, and this also created a number of cross curriculum opportunities. This means that if you come to Berkeley to study contemporary music, you still have a chance to study some dance or to um, to study some musical theater or some classical music. And the same goes for students on the, on the conservatory side. Another perk of the merge was the fact that now you gain access to the facility and resources of two different schools. That means that you will have access to spaces and studios and resources either from Berkeley or at the conservatory. Moving forward, um, last but not least, we part of the Berkeley network is also Berkeley, New York City, which is a campus that was launched two years ago. Now, historically, um, in in the city of in the city of Manhattan, there used to be uh, this uh, recording studio. There was a legendary recording studio called the Power Station. The Power Station is a place where folks like Stevie Ray Vaughan, Dire Straits, Madonna, John Mayer recorded some of the best hits. And you still kind of get um, goosebumps when you get, when you walk into the campus because these are the actual spaces where some of these legendary records were recorded. And it's in the city of Manhattan. And a few years ago, Berkeley acquired the whole power station and turned it into, kept the recording studio uh, spaces, but also turned it into a campus. And this is what we now call Berkeley NYC, where we offer three um, master of arts in creative media and technology. I mean, it's, it's technically one program with three different specializations, right? The difference with this is that these programs are one year long. Uh, and as you can see, we have songwriting and production for those of you who have an interest in, you know, uh, developing your skills and lyrical content, writing and design for musical theater, uh, and live experience and design, which is a program that focuses on um, live performances and everything that is behind the artist on stage. So there could be lighting, there could be light shows, uh, projections on stage. So everything that makes a concert memorable that's what this specialization will teach you how to set up. All right, and so that's that's for the Berkeley network, but the Berkeley network does not end here with you know these campuses that we have. That's because part of our Berkeley network are also our partners. We have a network of 23 partner schools around the world, and specifically to South America, I would like to bring to your attention EMAT, our um, our partner in Bogota, as well as ProJazz in Santiago, Chile. Now, the greatest thing about the, our partners is the fact that they teach the Berkeley curriculum. So these two schools, for example, we have the highest level of partnerships with that allows the schools to, sorry, that allows students to come to the schools and um, 
study for a year to a year and a half and then transfer 100% of their credits to Berkeley. So by the time that they audition and come to Berkeley, they're already in their second year, right? In this way, they get to save um, money on cost of living and cost of tuition. And also they come to get to, they get to come to Berkeley already at a higher level of, um, uh, at a higher academic level, right? And they get started in their second year. Uh, I encourage you to go on our on our website and take a look at all of our partners. Maybe some folks here in this group are connecting from outside of South America. Um, but please take a look. And if you see a partner that is close to you, I highly recommend you connecting with them. And maybe who knows, you know, you connect with them, you connect with us and you find your way of making this whole journey possible. So moving forward, um, you're probably wondering, OK, all this is great but what is it that I can do when I go to Berkeley, okay? This is why Brie put this fantastic um, slide together with all the majors that we have. We have 14 of them. As I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, 12 of these are available as a diploma and as a degree, uh, and then two of them are only available as a degree, and that's music therapy and music education. Now, the reason why we have these degrees, sorry, these majors is because it's really a matter of what are the things, what are the skills that you as a musician need to acquire to get to do the job that you want to do, okay? And this is the answer to your question, right? This is the reason why these majors exist, because a musician in 2023 that, or sorry, I should say a young musician in 2023 who is getting an education in music and hence wants to get a career in the music industry needs the skills, you know, to do whatever kind of job that they have in mind. Now, it's up to you to figure out by the time that you apply to Berkeley to the time that you actually have to declare a major, and this happens in the end of the first year, what is the direction that you want your academic and professional career to take, right? So as you can see, if, if you're somebody that wants to deepen their understanding in classical music or composition, obviously there's a composition, a composition major available. If you're somebody who loves to work with musicians that record them, loves to, uh, the perks of uh, being in a studio uh, and do production, we have three programs available that focus on arranging and production uh, and writing, and that's contemporary writing and production, music production and engineering, and electric production and design. Obviously, they all sound very similar, but if you go on our website, you'll see a slide that looks just like that, and you'll get a chance to click on that major and exactly go through the classes that you'll be taking, <clears throat> right? And then we also have um, majors like film scoring, for example, for those of you who have a passion for matching musical content to visuals. So if you ever wonder how a soundtrack of a movie works, right? If you ever wondered how to produce music that should go on top of a commercial, um, how do you come up with music that goes in a video game, right? How do you come up with music that, that goes in, in your cell phone and as your ringtone? Who does that and why? And why do they sound like that? And how are they produced? These are this is the major that you should look into, right? Um, on the other end, maybe you have a passion for songwriting. You love writing songs. You love to figure out what makes a song successful. What makes a great song? How do you pair lyrical content and musical content and make sure that these go together and work perfectly? Or maybe you're somebody who's who's got an entrepreneurial attitude and loves to scout artists and promote them and make, some, and make them successful, right? And this is why we have a music business and management program available, right? So as you can, what I encourage you to do is take a look at these and think, what is the direction that your music professional career should take, right? And Brie and I and the whole team here, we're here to support these decisions that you make. You know, coming to Berkeley is great, but you need to be figuring out what direction this, you know, you're going and what is the best direction for you to go, right? And this is why we have this slide here about careers that ties so well with the other slide about majors, because on this slide, we have a very limited list 
of uh, companies that have hired students that graduated from Berkeley, right? So you'll see Spotify, you see music streaming platform, Spotify, Apple, uh, you'll see uh, Warner, uh, so labels, uh, you will see Google and Apple, uh, Sony Music, but you will also see companies that do not necessarily and only focus on music, like Facebook. I'm not sure. Yeah, it's on this slide. Yes, or Tesla, for example. And this is what this is because Berkeley is not a music school. Berkeley is a college that teaches college level classes, right? So obviously, students that come out of Berkeley, a lot of them end up playing music, but a lot of them end up working with music, and that's because Berkeley breaks the stereotype of the musician who can only be a performer. Right, so this is a very, very old stereotype. If you're a musician, you aren't gonna end up on stage playing music, right? So this has been broken many, many, many years ago when all these completely different opportunity in music started arising, right? And that's because each and every one of us as a musician, we all different from one another, right? So I'm gonna use Brie and I as a, as a, as a, as a, um, as a, um, um, is uh, not a guinea pig. There's probably a better word for it. Brie and I is an example. <laughs> so Brie comes from a classical background and she's a cellist, right? She is, and Brie, correct me if I'm wrong. She's uh, uh, mainly a performer, correct? Yeah, okay. totally. Right. Um, on the other end, I love, I'm a guitarist and I love rock music. Even though I've done some performance, my interest lies in songwriting, right? So there is a very good chance that Brie and I could cross path at Berkeley and work, get to work together in a performance or in a recording um, scenario. But there's also a chance that our path will never cross. And that's because students at Berkeley focus on different things. There's a common denominator and that's Berkeley. And there's another common denominator and that's music, right? But students come and they have different interests, right? Some of us like to focus on technology. Some of us like to focus on business. Some of us like to focus on um, uh, psychology and what makes uh, music powerful when it comes to healing uh, people in need, right? Um, some of us may be focusing on education and want to develop their skills. So by the time that they graduate, they're able to secure a job at a school or at a, at a college or a conservatory. And because they're passionate with helping other young musicians, right? So when you take a look at this, all these majors and all these options, you really realize that you're not necessarily going to be somebody who's going to be playing music, but you're going to be somebody who's going to be part of this wider network that is called the music industry, right? That that includes concerts and performers and studio people and people that work in education and business people and labels and so on and so forth, right? And because this aspect of the music in, in, in the music industry is so multifaceted, we have a whole department on campus that is called the Career Center with the sole job of hooking you up with opportunities for jobs and gigs and internship from the time you begin your career at Berkeley to the time you graduate and after. Right. So something great about the Career Center, they developed this fantastic tool uh, that is called Career Communities. So if you go on Google and uh, Brie, when, whenever you got a minute, maybe you can share this with the, with the group. Um, if you go on Google and you look up Career Communities, there is a tool that they've developed where you can choose um, a career. Right. You could choose songwriting. You could choose performance or you could choose uh, music education. You click on it and then you get to see what are the possible career outcomes that could that you could benefit from being in that field, right? I'm a songwriter, I will be a songwriter. Doesn't work that way. If I have a passion in songwriting, there's a number of options that will open up in front of me by the time I'm done studying. Right. And if I am in, if I am, for example, uh, in music education, am I gonna be a teacher? Not necessarily. There's a number of career options available even within the realm of music education. So highly, highly recommend it. Take a look at this tool because it will help you uh, narrow down your interest when it comes to careers and or, or profession within the music industry. All right, um, moving forward. 
we are going to be talking about money. That's my favorite topic, apparently. <laughs> so one of the greatest thing about Berkeley is our very generous scholarship program. Okay, scholarships are available to entering students through the audition process and Berkeley will sorry and Brie will give you a little bit more information about the audition process that we have in place, but by applying to Berkeley. Um, you get to be evaluated through an audition process if you meet certain standards of. Um, certain standards or standards of uh, proficiency in music and potential, which is which is the thing that we most interested in, you get to secure a scholarship that could go potentially from zero dollars to full tuition and beyond. OK, beyond it means that we also have presidential scholarship that will cover for your accommodation cost. Right. But the greatest thing about the scholarships that you can secure to the audition is that these are available to you and they're renewable, meaning if I audition for Berkeley today and if I get a $10,000 scholarship every year, there will be an amount, a total amount of $10,000 that will be deducted for my, from my tuition bill, okay? So it's not exactly like a $10,000 scholarship, it's more like a $40,000 award that I can benefit from, okay? So my recommendation as a fellow musician would be, I know this all sounds scary, but just give it a try. You know, apply, uh, uh, take a shot at your audition, learn more about what the audition entails from Brie later, take notes, go on YouTube, look up Berkeley audition, see when Berkeley auditions are available and just do it and see how it goes, right? And hope, hopefully if you get the scholarship that you need to make this possible, then we'll see you here on campus, right? And if in this uh, group of, in, in this audience that we have here today in these sessions, we already have students that have been admitted to Berkeley, I also encourage you to scan this QR code and take a look of our, at our outside scholarship. These are a completely different thing. These are scholarships that um, are endorsed by Berkeley, but not affiliated with Berkeley. And they're, these are all music related. Right, so you may be able to find some scholarship that you you're eligible for. Right, they have different criteria. Some of these may be based on the country where you're from, or a, a specific geographical part of the world, or maybe related to uh, the ethnicity, maybe related to the kind of music that you play, your genre of music. Um, so there's different criteria. If you find one that you think that you're eligible for, by all means, you should go ahead and apply for it. Okay, so moving forward, um, once you're at Berkeley, your scholarship is not the only aspect that makes it easier for you financially. Obviously, we have a very generous student employment uh, budget that allows us to hire students for um, uh, in, in different departments. So in our departments, the Global Enrollment Initiatives alone, we have many, many students that that perform in different in different jobs, right? Um, and this is our way to support our community and to put you to work. And <laughs> so it's an opportunity for you to realize that there is so much that can be done within the music industry that goes beyond performing or teaching or studio work, right? So if we skip to the next slide, um, we're finally going to be talking about the audition. Right. Uh, so, Brie, how about you go over this? Absolutely. I'll, I'll, I can use a sip of water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Daniel, for sharing all of that background and history about Berkeley. Um, that's really important information to help you understand more about the school and our goals and kind of where we're headed as an institution. Um, so if all of that so far has interested you, now we want to talk a little bit about how you can actually get to Berkeley. What is the process like to audition and start your journey? So the audition itself is probably the most important part of the entry requirements to Berkeley. So because we are a music school, while not everybody is a performer as a major, you do have to perform as part of your entrance to Berkeley in the audition. So the audition consists of four different parts. The prepared piece is 
a piece of your choice. So it can be anything from a standard piece of music in whatever genre you perform in, or it can be even a song you wrote yourself. If you're from the classical side, like I am, it could be any type of sonata or repertoire of that sort. Really, it's your chance to showcase what you're interested in and showcase your skills in the type of music that you're interested in focusing on. So that's your chance to really show your musical self, the prepared piece. The other parts are for us to really see where your skills lie as a musician and where your training has got you up to this point. So there's an improvisation section. Um, there will be either a track that you can play along with or sometimes the faculty members that are running the audition will play along with you. You get to choose the style of the improv and the key that you feel comfortable playing in, and then you just play along. So even if you're not super experienced with improvising, um, everybody gives it a shot and tries out that part for the audition. Um, the next part is an ear training aspect of the audition, which will involve having to listen to what the faculty plays and having to recite it back. So there'll usually be a rhythmic section. Um, they might clap or tap out some rhythms and you have to clap them back or sing them back. And there will be a section where they might play some chords on the piano or play a couple of melodies and they'll have you sing them back and they'll have you tell them like what kind of chord it is. Is it major, minor, augmented, diminished? that kind of thing. And that's just to see where you're at with your musical training, just to get a gauge on that. And the final part that can be a little bit scary is the sight reading. So that is just giving you a piece of music, um, usually pretty short that you've never seen before. You'll just take a look at it. You can take a minute to look over it and then you'll just play it or sing it, whatever instrument you're preparing with or you would sing the sight reading exercises. So those are the four parts of the audition that everybody auditioning to Berkeley completes. And I see a question in the chat, do you need to audition if you wanna major in music business? You do, yes. So anybody who is applying for the Bachelor of Music needs to audition. And no matter what instrument you play, if you're a singer, the audition is exactly the same, those four parts. So if you're interested in auditioning for Berkeley, that's really what you should focus on is getting those aspects of the audition ready. So we wanted to share a couple of resources with you to help you get ready for the audition if you're interested in applying for Berkeley. So you can scan either of these QR codes and save these resources. The first one is a little bit of a cheat sheet with some practice tips and techniques for how you can organize your practice, how you can track what you're practicing, maybe make your practice more efficient. That's the very first one. And then that second one is a video from this series of lessons by Berkeley faculty member Leo Blanco. He's a pianist. Um, this series has four videos. They're pretty short and they each focus on a topic to help you optimize your practicing. So there's one focusing on improv, practicing pieces. This specific one is about practicing technique. And I think it's a really helpful series if you're getting ready for an audition, or if you just want to learn more about how you can improve your skills. So that's that second one. You can take a scan of that as well. And we wanted to share some more targeted towards the audition and performance preparation itself. So that first code right there on the screen actually takes you to a Berkeley resource to practice playing with a backing track. So if you're just beginning with improv, you haven't had much experience, or if you're very experienced, but you want to practice with a track like you would do for the Berkeley audition, um, that page right there, you can scan that and that'll take you to some of those practice exercises. There are different styles and there are different keys that you can practice with. So that can be really helpful to get ready. And then that second one is a little bit of a cheat sheet about preparing a tune 
for performance. So what things do you need to consider when you have a tune and you wanna get it ready for a performance? So that's a little bit about the audition process to get to Berkeley. Um, we want to open it up to questions if anybody has any. I know we answered a couple of them so far, um, but if you have any questions about Berkeley in general, about the application and audition process, about what it's like as a student here on campus, we're both here in Boston, um, please either raise your hand or put the question in the chat and we'd be happy to answer. Okay, I see from Carlos. Is it possible to audition online and does it affect the results? So absolutely, it's totally possible to audition online. So Berkeley has been doing online auditions for quite a while. Um, we do them, I would say during the busy season, every week we have online auditions. Um, so it doesn't affect the results any different than the live audition would. So you're considered exactly the same, no matter whether you do an in-person audition or whether you do an audition online, because we understand that not everybody can get to one of our live audition sites. Um, so while we do travel quite a bit throughout the year to do auditions in different locations, um, it's totally okay to do your audition online. And the way you would decide that when you apply for Berkeley, you would get to choose whether you prefer an online audition or an in-person location for your audition. All right, and I see we have a hand raised. Um, Sebastian, would you like to ask us a question? Yes, uh, so, no, um, hello, hello, Brisa, and, and hello, Daniel. So um, I'm currently studying at the MAT in Bogota. So um, uh, pretty much I'm um, getting familiar with all the Ber Berkeley um, style of uh, studies. And uh, of course, Berkeley has been my dream since over 10 years. Um, but uh, I have a couple of questions in terms of, of being realistic. I would like to, to have an idea of uh, without any kind of scholarships, uh, what could be the cost of tuition for studying in, in Berkeley per year? So I can um, make myself aware of, of how much would it cost. But uh, well, of course, taking into account that my goal will be to um, pretty much kill it, to get a scholarship. but. Still, I wanted to know the to know the number because I guess I need to uh, prepare myself in case I don't get it. But um, wanted to know about that because I haven't been able to find the number on the website. And the second, I have another question which was related to the fact that I'm studying at a month. So mm -hmm. um, I understand that I can um, pull out some credits that I am cursing right now at a month. And I would like to know: um, Do you consider? all of the credits that, I, uh, that I, um, I'm cursing at the mat or just uh, a percentage of them? Yeah, so thanks for joining us today. Um, I was actually just at a mat two weeks ago and it's a fantastic school. Yeah, I, don't know if... I, I think I saw you. <laughs> yeah, we did some auditions there in Bogota and we did some clinics. So yeah, we might've seen each other there. Um, so for your first question, um, the tuition at Berkeley, um, without any scholarships, I believe right now it's about $42,000 per year. Does that sound right to you as well, Daniel? Yes. So that is just for the tuition of Berkeley without any scholarships or financial aid. Um, oh, and I see Daniel put a link in the chat as well with some of that information. Um, okay. And that's without housing as well. So students decide, some of them decide to live on campus, some decide to get an apartment off campus, depending on what their budget is like. So that's like the most basic cost. And you can that, see more. That is, that, that is just for the, the tuition, right? So in, on top of those $4,000, you probably have to take into account, um, I don't know, living costs, right? Yes. So that's just the tuition. Yeah, right. I would say the um, the ballpark is around seventy thousand. You know, to in include everything, right? Living costs, um, health insurance, uh, tuition, housing, right? So all be this is what the number that you need to keep in mind. You know, on for, on a yearly basis. Um, now to that, you need to subtract any scholarship that you receive. 
right? Because if you audition to Berkeley and obviously you get a $20,000 scholarship, there would be that amount minus whatever scholarship or any other scholarship that you get because all the scholarships are independent. You could secure a scholarship at Berkeley, then do some financial aid, for example, and then do any other outside scholarship. And then you could work here as well, right? So it, it, the number is 70,000, but it's up to you how you can bring this number down so that you can make it feasible for you and your family to be here. Uh, okay. Uh, in, in terms of that, so pretty much uh, if, uh, in case of getting a scholarship, which is uh, probably associated to a percentage of the tuition, um, it, it, it gets reduced from the tuition cost, right? So um, I don't know, you get 20,000 out of the 42,000, but still you have to think account the labor cost, but it, 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 it gets reduced from the, um, from the tuition, right? The percentage or, or oh, yeah. um, the amount you get from a, from a scholarship, right? Yeah, it's automatically, automatically deducted from your tuition bill. So tuition oh. is paid semester by semester. Um, if you get, for example, like a, a ten thousand dollars scholarship a year, that that ten thousand is divided in two, right? So five thousand and five thousand. That's because in one year we have two semester, fall and spring, right? So when you go pay for your fall tuition bill, then it will be the bill minus five thousand, and then when you go pay for your spring, it will be the bill minus five thousand. So that's the way it works. Okay. It just depends on how much scholarship you you get. Okay, great, great. That gives me like a, a better view of the situation. And um, and, and, and complementing that, well, um, what what I was mentioning before, which was uh, uh, taking into account that I am already cursing at math right now, and that uh, I would like to do put my effort into getting good grades so I can um, take my credits into Berkeley too. Um, are all credits considered or are just a percentage of them? I mean, uh, I understand not, not the instrument one, but the remaining credits can be taken into consideration for credits to Berkeley. I'm, credits. I'm not sure I understand the, the question. I'm sorry. Uh, the thing is that, um, let, me, let me put you an example. So let's say uh, I take a certain amount of credits uh, that can be transferred to Berkeley. Um, but I, I'm, I'm going to put the example with some uh, previous uh, college that I used to study in. Uh, if you wanted to transfer credits from somewhere else, they say like, okay, if you cursed 100 credits, uh, we can only accept uh, a maximum top of 60. They, they can evaluate uh, the whole credit you cursed, just a maximum amount of 60% of the credit you took. Um, I wanted to know if, uh, on this case, uh, you evaluate all the credits that I'm taking at the mat, or if there is a, a limit percentage that you can take, like, uh, transferring to Berkeley. Yeah, no, I understand. I understand now. Um, so when you come through a, a Berkeley Partner School, you have to be, um, you need to be meeting the requirements of the agreement that we have in place with that school. Right. So in the agreement, there's a number of classes that you have to be taking to fulfill their agreement. Right. So you have to take 100 percent of those classes uh, that are listed in the agreement so that 100 percent of your class or your credits can transfer to Ber Berkeley as a packet. So, for wow. example, I could not go to Emma for like just one semester, take, let's say, 15 credits and then go to Berkeley and expect Berkeley to transfer those 15 credits. Oh, okay. no. <laughs> yeah, okay, good. no, no, I, I'm just giving an example, right? So I would need to be there for as long as defined by the agreement and then take all the credits that I'm required to be taking. Only then I could have all of them transferred to Berkeley. So that's the way it usually works. Oh, okay, great. No, that, that's, actually, that's actually the idea. <laughs> so here's the complete that program. And uh, I understand that it's also, um, you also take into account the, the grades, the qualifications of, the, of each one of the courses, right? Oh yeah, definitely. So, you know, for example, you know, as I mentioned, we have different uh, agreements in place with different institutions. So one, you, even though you're already at EMAT, you, it's all, all, always helpful to go on a website, both EMAT's website and Berkeley's, and take a look yep. at, you know, the requirements of, 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 of the partnership. Right to have a better sense of what is expected expected from you as a student who wants to complete that 
articulation agreement slash program, let's call it program because that's really what it is, right? If you finish that program, when you're ready to transition into Berkeley, what are the things that you need to, that you need to uh, be aware of in this transition? When do you need to be auditioning for Berkeley? All of these things are things that, that you can be advised from both your advisor and Emmett and the folks here in this department. Okay, perfect. So pretty much to sum up, um, in case they have the, all those requirements in terms of grades and everything, um, I could transfer uh, whatever is in the program, but it's going to be taken into consideration the complete set of courses that I take at a month, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I think I saw a question on the on the on the chat that I was actually uh, also gonna. Do. Um, even if uh, I get on the best case scenario that all the courses that I take at Emad are uh, valid and uh, very much, I could transfer the credits and I only have let's say two years remaining for finishing a major in Berkeley. Uh, it, in that case, I'm, I'm okay. I can also be considered for for scholarship. Or, or just for it, it is just considered for the full program. So, uh, so is the question is, can you be awarded a scholarship when you transition into Berkeley? Yes. Yeah, of course. Yeah, that's the uh, so when when you audition to Berkeley, technically the people there auditioning you don't know that you're coming from Emma, right? So it's you you just come in as the process the same that it is for freshmen like the the evaluation process oh, because okay. of that you could also you you can definitely benefit from the scholarship program that we have perfect perfect well thank you daniel thank you right for sure um it looks like we have another email from uh, sorry another um question from carlos after being accepted to berkeley is it possible to postpone the start for how many semester great question so let's say that Carlos, you get admitted to Berkeley for fall, right? Um, you get the option to defer for a, a full academic year, which is usually two semesters, right? That means that you could postpone, and we call it defer, right? You could defer to spring or you could defer to summer. So you have the option to go one or the other. Um, however, you know, this this happens if you get admitted into the fall semester, you want to move forward. If you get admitted into, let's say, the summer semester, you could defer to spring only and not fall. I know it's it's a little bit confused, confusing. Uh, pretty much, you can def defer from a fall semester into one or two semesters, but you cannot defer into a fall semester because usually our fall semester is our busiest intake so we try not to accommodate deferral whenever possible and um i would just like to uh bring on screen our colleagues from education usa if uh, if they're still here um i know that uh hi brita how you doing i know that you just shared contact information for for your center and for the advisor um and any what are the best ways to get a hold of you other than you know the email contact information do you have any upcoming upcoming events that you would like to this audience to encourage to attend yes well first of all i would like to thank you brie and daniel for this amazing opportunity to know more about uh, berkeley as a school of music that everybody everybody desire <laughs> and wants to to study and to get into so if in any case you want to get in contact with education usa first of all please follow us in our social media that means instagram facebook uh in your country and also you can go global looking at our web page okay i just wrote down some names and some emails for people in Peru and Chile and also in Colombia. So you can contact directly to, for example, Sandro Molina in Peru, Claudia Castillo in Chile, or myself today here in Cali, but I also can uh, transfer in case you are connecting from another uh, city from Colombia. All right. Thanks so much, Brie. Okay. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, I also want to share um, 
our link tree. So Daniel shared some of our Instagram accounts with you, so you can follow us on there. Um, you can also check out our link tree, which shows all of our different upcoming events. So we have the events like this where we have partners that we um, present with, but we also have these sessions called Ask Global Initiatives every couple of weeks where anybody can join the Zoom session kind of like this and just ask us any questions you might have about Berkeley. Um, so let me get that link to share. I don't know if you want to add anything else to that, Daniel. No, that's uh, that's that's a good catch over there. Yeah, yes. Please feel free to check out our link tree. We have a lot of you know upcoming engagement opportunities happening online and in person. Uh, I'm gonna be going down to Quito, Ecuador, uh, at the end of uh, this week. I'll be there for a week. Uh, but we're always traveling to places, so you, I, I hope that you can find a chance to come shake our hands <laughs> instead. Of, I mean, this is fantastic, but obviously we want to see you in person whenever feasible. So yeah, once again, a uh, huge shout out to all our colleagues at Education USA. Thank you again for making this happen. And thank you to everybody in the, in the audience who was able to make time for this session. I look forward to learning more from you and stay connected with you. And uh, you know where to find us now. So no excuses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you everybody for joining us. Um, we did record today's session. So we're gonna get this on our YouTube channel in case you know anybody else that was interested but wasn't able to attend. Um, within the next couple of days, we'll get this published on our YouTube channel, which like Instagram, you can find this everywhere, Berkeley Global. So Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, we're everywhere. Um, we're going to send it to our Education USA contacts in here so they can share it with everybody. Um, but anyone else that wants to see the video, if you want to review any of the information a second time, uh, it'll be up on our YouTube. Fantastic. Thank you for that. All right. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. Thank, thank you so much. Take care. Bye, Bye. everybody. Bye-bye.